<laughs> hey y'all welcome back to my channel all right y'all listen i'm on a high i'm like my child want to say hey hold on nah the girl just got back from seeing the lion king and lion king is my all-time favorite all-time favorite Disney movie and I just realized I'm gonna get a tattoo right here it's a Lion King tattoo I'm gonna name my first what well, my first daughter a name from the Lion King like my next dog name will be Mufasa or Nala listen the movie was so great literally from the beginning with the nah you know I was already like I was watering up but I got a I got a problem cuz I know y'all seen all the memes dropping and I know Y'all got the message. Why were people bringing their kids to Lion King? Huh? I wait. So in today's video, guys, I'm actually gonna be talking about skincare. Not too long ago, I put out this poll on my Instagram and I was gonna do like a one brand tutorial. Nope, I was gonna do um, a makeup review of the Juvia's Place, a one brand tutorial of a Juvia's Place makeup, or I was gonna do a skincare series. And based on the votes from there, skincare one hands down i don't claim to be a makeup guru i just know what i like to put on my face and what looks good sometimes i don't even know what look good for real and then i walk out the house and i look like and I, oh. so because oh y'all listen 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 linda listen before y'all come for me like y'all always do the fire alarms were fixed the fire alarms in my house were good y'all didn't hear any beep in the last couple of videos because i got it fixed the thing is we had this terrible monsoon come through here the other day. It, the way the thunder hit, it hit so hard, y'all. It set the fire alarm off in this building, in our individual apartments, and like all the other apartment buildings. It was just going until the fire department got here. So skincare is something that's so important to me, you know, in a couple of, several blogs, I've talked about how skincare is important to me. I want to go to esthetician school. I've learned things on my own because I wasn't raised. I was told, you know, put some cocoa butter on your face and Vaseline and, brush your teeth wash your face and that's all you got i never really knew about skincare and i have oily skin well i had oily skin now i have more oily combination but i wanted to go out and learn and that addiction just came from youtube first i started with makeup but i always realized i would see people do makeup all the time and their makeup would look so bad because under their skin was so bad and i'm not saying that everybody who has you know acne prone skin or really bad hyperpigmentation it means you don't have good practices but a lot of them didn't because we just weren't educated on skincare so I took it upon myself for myself to learn about skincare and to learn what I needed to do and through trial and error and being a product junkie and doing research and watching videos and learning what specific and key products were I realized what I needed to know. So now, for me, I know what my essentials are, and I'm gonna share those with you guys, and I would highly recommend you do your own research, and you figure out what works for you. If you guys are interested in seeing today's video and learning about the six essential items that I recommend that you have in your skincare routine, keep on watching. So the way I'm gonna go through today's video is I'm gonna basically go through the order in which you apply these products, and at each step, I'm gonna tell you which product you should start with and which ones you should end with. So it's kind of like a two for You get a two for one, I'm telling you which products to use and the order to use them in. Because for some folks, it might be a boatload of information, information overload at one time, and I don't wanna do that. I'm really trying to put this in layman's terms and make it as simple as possible. So here we go. So the first step in skincare for me is to cleanse. And what I've learned, it comes from like K-Beauty, which is like Korean beauty. K-Beauty has really put um, this first step on the map and it works, so it goes. This first step is called double cleansing. So what that means is literally what it says, you clean twice. And so for me, I wear makeup, and I wear makeup every day during the week. Um, I don't wear heavy makeup, but I do wear makeup every day because you never know if you're gonna meet your husband, if you're gonna meet Michelle Obama, if you're gonna meet Barack Obama. You never know who you're gonna meet outside, so you always need to have to eyebrows drawn all the way to start with um, removing your makeup or if you don't wear makeup removing the debris from your skin because whether you wear makeup or not you put lotion on your face in the morning some of y'all or sunscreen some of y'all but either way being outside the toxins in the air the debris in the air all the free radicals in the air are getting into your pores are getting into your skin and if they're not getting in they're sitting on it and you don't want to go to bed or you don't even want to start your day like that so you're going to start with double cleansing. The way you will start is with a makeup remover wipe. You can start with a cleansing balm or you can use a cleansing oil. Now what I'm giving you is what I know, what I've used. Now the world is big and it's your oyster so there are several different options for each of these things but I'm gonna tell you what I know and what has worked for me. 
and my people. Makeup wipes. I have makeup wipes because they're convenient. I don't always reach for makeup wipes because they pull and tug on the skin. No matter how gentle you are, you're pulling to wipe away the debris or the makeup off of your face. And I'm just not in the business of pulling on my skin more than I have to because don't nobody want premature wrinkles. I'm really trying to be popping when I get 75 years old. Second is a cleansing balm. Now this is something, it kind of feels like Crisco, literally like a balm. It feels maybe like your chapstick, a little bit of Vaseline. It's very smooth. It comes in a solid form, kind of like coconut oil. It comes in like a solid form, but once you once you warm it up with um, room temperature or body heat, it melts down into your hands, and you literally just put it directly on your face. You massage it into your skin, and it gently removes the makeup. So it's no tugging, it's no pulling. You rub it over your eyes, you rub it over all your skin, and it removes the makeup. You literally rinse it. You pat your face and then the makeup is gone. If you don't wanna spend that money, you have an alternative. And a regular oil, they can do the same thing, and it can be coconut oil. I know a lot of folks use coconut oil. I tried it, I'm allergic to coconut oil, so I can't use it. My skin has a really bad reaction. My hair has a really bad reaction. My mouth has a really bad reaction because I tried oil pulling with it a long time ago. But um, the research has been done on coconut oil. The thing about it is coconut, any oil that you use, specifically coconut oil, Quality really matters when you're using an oil on your face because if you don't know, a lot of oils are pore clogging. And if you're not careful, even though you're trying to cleanse your skin, you're removing the makeup, but you're clogging your pores, which later down the road are gonna cause more breakouts on your skin or blackheads, and that's literally what we're trying to avoid. The reason that coconut oil works so well is because though coconut oil can be slightly pore clogging, if you get it in a great quality, cold press, organic, then it literally has more benefits for your skin. Part two is the second part of your cleanse, the second part of double cleansing. This is where you will literally use a face cleanser wash on your face. Now, depending on your skin type, you will use a different cleanser. If you have oily skin or oily combination, you'll probably use like a more water-based or a gel-based cleanser. If you, have, if you have more dry skin, something more milky, something that's still very cleansing but non-stripping will be good for your skin. Oily combination skin, maybe something like a foam, a water-based. This cleansing part is very important because though you do the first part of the double cleansing, this cleanser will literally get the remainder of the oil, the balm, the makeup um, remover residue left off of your face. And you're gonna follow that up with almost another safety net with part two of your skincare essentials, which is a toner. Now growing up, I heard a little bit about a toner. All I heard about was witch hazel, witch hazel. And there's nothing wrong with that. Do your research on witch hazel though. Figure out what it is and figure out if the formula of witch hazel is good for your skin. There, there are different types of witch hazel with different, different essential oils and minerals infused in them. And based on what's infused in those witch hazels, you can figure out if they will work for your skin or not and your problems. So the purpose of toner is like limitless. For one, it does the clean up behind cleansing. You will be amazed. By the second time you cleanse, when you take that little cotton pad or a cotton ball and you rub it across your face to see how much is left on that cotton pad. Keep rubbing the toner on your face until there's no more residue coming off on the cotton pad. Toner is also good for restoring the pH balance in your skin. Our skin is naturally slightly acidic and so by using a toner it helps to bring that balance back to the skin that we've kind of thrown off a little bit with the double cleansing process. Toner also helps to reduce the size of the pores on your face. For me, I suffer from large pores right here in this area. So toner helps to shrink those pores slightly. At the same time, because you've gotten your face completely free of all the debris and the remainder makeup, it prepares your skin to receive the rest of the nutrients that you're about to put right back into your skin. But the older you get, your skin stops producing a lot of the nutrients that naturally came with you when you were born, that were naturally occurring as you got older. But once you hit a certain age, and that age can slightly vary for every person, your skin stops producing these certain nutrients. Step three, serum. Serums are probably my favorite part of my whole skincare routine. A serum is a highly concentrated product whose whole goal is to target a specific area that you have problems with on your skin. So if you have issues with hyperpigmentation, dullness, you'll find a serum that helps to counteract those problems and then you'll use those accordingly. Now, I'm big on vitamin C serums. I'm also big on um, this ordinary serum that I just got, it has niacinamide in it and it has really helped with the hyperpigmentation. Serums tend to be very thick, um, sometimes very oily, depending on what texture that you get. Or you, a serum is 100% necessary. 
when I first started skincare, I started with Murad. And Murad had this vitamin C serum that I still use to this day, and this was two years ago. Vitamin C helps to brighten and lighten your skin. The reason I was concerned about that, not because I didn't like my brown skin, girl. Not because I didn't like my brown skin, but because my skin is darker, my body holds on to melanin, and it produces more melanin with an injury or a bump or something on my face, and so my skin was holding on to where I was picking bumps at and causing dark spots in my face. And because of that, I wanted to lighten them, and the first way to go was exfoliating and vitamin C. So vitamin C, What's my holy grail? So if you're looking to lighten and brighten, vitamin C serum. Step number four is an eye cream. Some folks say this is optional, but for me an eye cream is not optional, baby. Because listen, I have very dry under eyes. I need a bag of time for that. Eye creams target current issues that you have with your eyes or they can be a preventative measure. For me, I use eye creams as both. One for targeting my dry under eyes, but also helping to prevent fine lines and wrinkles that naturally come with aging. Dark circles lines and wrinkles, aging, dry under eye, get an eye cream. Number five, a moisturizer. I'm not gonna even comfort folks because I know people who really don't be wearing lotion on their face or their body, so I'm really not gonna come for you. I mean, some of y'all be moisturizing when they got something because when you get older, everybody's gonna rub on your body, but they ain't gonna get my business. By using a moisturizer, it helps to lock in all the products that you just put into your skin, replenishing your skin, overnight as you sleep. Now we got some honorable mentions right after here, y'all. Based on whether it's day or night, your products will fluctuate a little bit. Like during the daytime, you'll probably use a lighter moisturizer. At night, you'll probably wanna use a heavier one because you really wanna kick those nutrients into the skin and let them seep in overnight as you sleep because that's when our skin does most of its work. But we have some honorable mentions. And the first one we're gonna start with is something that's extremely important to me and that's exfoliating. So exfoliating is very, very important. And I think we knew that, but we've been doing it wrong. I eat St. Ives and the little shards of shells that they have in that face wash that we all used to love, that that um, that apricot scrub, y'all. Look at the ingredients in there, look up what those ingredients are, and then look up videos of the scars that it leaves on your face. Two to three times a week, depending on your skin type. If you have sensitive skin, you might want to reduce it a little bit and then build up if you feel like you need it and your skin can handle it. But the reason exfoliating is so important is because one, exfoliating removes the dead skin cells off of your face. It also helps with cell turnover. Now you can exfoliate several different ways. You can use a brush, I have one of those. You can use a physical exfoliant, something similar to the St. Ives, which is my least favorite. And there's also chemical exfoliant. So the three different types of exfoliators you can use, you, like I said, you can use a brush. You can use some kind of like face brush, like one of those Clarisonics. I have a Vanity Planet brush. You can use a uh, physical scrub, like I said, like the St. Ives one, but not. Something that has literally physical bees or something in it that, can that you can feel on your skin. And the only issue that I have with physical exfoliants is that depending on what the, ex the exfoliants are once you rub them on your skin it feels like oh yeah it's getting really clean it's really getting in there but what it's really doing is those little shards of whatever they have in there is actually causing micro abrasions on your skin and what that means is there are very 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 tiny scars being drawn on your face from the exfoliant so when you do this and you feel the scrubbing and you think you're doing something you're just causing more damage because you're getting little rips on your skin and what happens especially with folks with melanin you do that you feel like your face is stripped and it's clean and it's now it's tight because you've cut it and your skin is trying to like put itself back together and as it's putting itself back together it's going to get darker because that's how we scar with folks with melanin so then you're going to cause micro abrasions on your skin many scars that are going to heal and that turns to hyperpigmentation the third option for an exfoliant is a chemical exfoliant. So you have these things called AHAs. They are alpha hydroxy acids. It's literally what it is. eats at the dead skin cells on your face. It's a gentle chemical exfoliant. It can burn a little bit depending on what you do in your skincare routine before you put this product on your face. There are several all over the market. The one I'm using now is from The Ordinary brand, AHA, BHA. It looks like blood. It's amazing. You leave it on your face for 10 minutes, a little tingle. It goes away. You rinse it off. Your face feels like a baby's butt. Number two of our honorable mentions are masks. We do them all the time. Sometimes I feel like people do them and they're not even really trying to target an area. Maybe sometimes you just want to have a girl down and put a mask on your face and that's fine too. But I'm not putting anything on my face just to be like, Ooh, you know, spa will put some cucumbers on. I'm not doing that. If I'm putting a mask on my face, it's because I'm having an issue somewhere and I need it to be targeted. If I'm gonna do something where I'm just relaxing, then it'll be a nice cooling mask, something like 
um, the Neutrogena Hydro Boost, they have a sheet mask which is full of um, hyaluronic acid just to put more hydration into your skin. So the reason that masks are so important is because they're full of nutrients also aimed at targeting a specific area. So for me, I have combination oily skin so I like to use charcoal mask because it helps to, to balance the oils in my skin but it also is really important because it has a lot of my masks have salicylic acid in it and what that is good for is acne. I suffer from the little balls of acne. I, I, par I partially found out from my esthetician what it's from, so I've been kind of targeting that. But also, sometimes I just get some big random acne bumps over my face. And it's really a problem for me because I take pride in my skin. So when I have a breakout, it usually comes from me eating dairy or cheese or something like that because it ain't good for your skin. You put on a mask, it's aimed to target a certain specific area. That can be dull skin, that can be dry skin, that can be oily skin, that can be acne prone skin. Number three, water. Akuna Matata. Now the last honorable mention, I know y'all didn't think I won't gonna mention this. I, I just know y'all didn't think I won't gonna mention this. Probably Y'all probably did because I'm black and black people really got an issue, but I'm about to let you know right now. You need to be wearing Sunscreen with SPF, Tanya. I'm letting you know right now, sis. Whatever your grandma and your mama told you is a lie. It's a lie because we need to be wearing sunscreen. It's not a joke, y'all. Just because we got more melanin in our skin does not mean we're completely protected from the sun. We just don't be burning like that. Did you know that 90% of all skin aging is a result of direct exposure to the sun? Did you know that if you put on SPF, you can lower those odds by a whole lot, like a whole lot. Because I want y'all to live as long as you can live a long, healthy, full life with popping skin. Y'all on a serious tip, they block the UV rays and they help protect yourself from the sun. The sun is getting closer and closer and hotter and hotter or whatever it's doing because I'm not a geologist or a meteorologist, but they can get their job right either, so I definitely ain't a meteorologist. So, so on a serious tip, SPFs are really important and you need to be wearing it every day. You need to put it on your face, put it on your ears, put it on your neck and on your decollete because your chest and your hands and your neck are the first signs of aging. People can tell your age no matter how good your face look because you might have some good genes and it might not catch up with you right now but it will so for a lot of SPF you, know, you see them all over the market the key thing about sunscreens is you need something that's about 30 to 35 SPF or higher but you really don't need anything beyond 30 or 35 because if you just do your own research don't take my word for it you have minimal benefits that come after those numbers but you have a higher price tag and that's how they get folks they want to say oh SPF 55 SPF 60 there aren't huge scientific differences between an SPF 35 and an SPF 60 besides how much you spend it for. So y'all, that's the end of today's video. I really wanted to go through six essential items routine that I highly recommend to have in your skincare routine. You don't have to go out and spend a whole bunch of money on things because you can't find things in a drugstore. Just pay attention to the ingredients, especially the active ingredients and the first and second ingredient. Because if you don't know, for the ingredients list, the first thing in that ingredients list is what that product is majority made from. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I have been preparing for this video for so long and I'm so happy that I was able to sit down and do it for you guys. Let us know down below what works for you. Guys, don't forget to thumbs up this video and subscribe. This skincare series is gonna be an ongoing thing as I learn more things, as you guys wanna know more things, and I just wanna teach you guys what I know. So guys, as always, thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for supporting me. As always, love on purpose, and I'll see you guys in the next video.